Greetings prop workers and welcome to Sawin Christmas Prop Projects. Uh, today we're going to be doing these garlands that I build for my my window boxes and it's a straightforward project with fantastic results as you can see. Um, this has taken me way too many extension cords to make work thanks to the power blocks on them. Anyways, enjoy the project and I look forward to the finished results some of you come up with. As you saw from the opening, we're working on garland today. Well, wreaths, boughs, all that fun stuff. Somebody requested when I did this to give a list of stuff that I actually use. So I'm going to do that before because this one is actually decently complex for the amount of stuff that goes into it. And it's surprising at how much you chew through it. Anyways, this over here is just your typical box store garland. Get one that is a little bit higher end because you want it to look good. This is green garland. If you know where to find this, awesome. I Every single time I find this stuff, I hold on to it like gold because I always wrap it in amongst my other stuff. Any type of lights that you like, I really like these Nomas, but they happen to be on sale, which makes them even better. You'd like some nice looking ribbon. Icicle lights, I'm not a huge fan of these ones per se, but they were a good price and you can swap them out if you don't like them later on. Uh, pine cones, I gather these things everywhere I go. I go camping, I get pine cones. My wife thinks I'm hilarious because I get excited when I see pine cones. It's just one of those things. Hot glue gun, the glue in it is regular glue. Doesn't have to be high temperature. We're going to be using it to be gluing wires into the pine cones. Twist ties are for marking more than actually holding. I don't like having stuff held by twist ties because they rot in time. Drill, because we're going to be drilling the pine cones. If you've got smaller pine cones, you might be able to take the wire there and put it down inside the pine cones easily using those pliers. But I find that these pine cones are hard as rock and I have to drill them before I put the wire down. So we're going to go through multiple steps here. And when we're all done, we will have a finished garland. So enjoy the fun and excitement of garland building. Step one, pine cone preparation. This wire here can be anything you want. This is, we've always called this hay wire. It's a decently heavy gauge, mild steel. So it's easy to work with. You can probably find this in most hardware stores. Or if you can't, something finer will work. I just like this because once it's in, it really holds. So just using linesman pliers, clip onto the end, twist it over once, go about uh, that far down, and you end up with a hook that we're gonna be using to put into the actual pine cones. I like to open this up just a little bit as an L. I could just actually go to there because when I actually go to put it into the pine cones, I like it a little bit. I like to be able to hook it over the branch when I'm gonna go. So now we've got two of those. I'm only gonna show one of each. You get your pine cones. Uh, these were actually found at my parents' place over the summer, and I took like three years worth that were sitting on the ground. Anyway, so what you do is you look at the end of the pine cone, and there's a, a woody part right there in the middle. What you want to do is you want to aim for that. You'll see the pine cone move a bit. It might complain a little bit. Throw some pith and all that. So once you got that hole there, you take the hot glue gun. And what I like to do is just squirt some down there. You'll get some that'll come out the other way. And you just take the hook. And you feel for where that hole decided to go. It's going to be one of these ones. This happens. I drilled the hole. Ah, there it is. Right there. So you push the hook in. And you, just like that, are done. And then what you do is put a little tiny bit up top here to just hold that in that little bit more and you're done. That's how you pretty much prepare these pine cones. And I'll be doing this a lot on all of my Christmas stuff because I like to work with natural items like pine cones. Now these ones are a bit harder because the base is further down on the inside. So sometimes you have to do a longer peg on these ones. So I'm just gonna take the drill, drill right down, get my hole made. I'm gonna make on this one, I'm just gonna do a little bit longer because I'm going deeper. Uh, there it is. Okay, take your hot glue, fill that little hole in so it gets some glue down the length of that. Of course, as soon as I put the hot glue on, I can't see where the hole went anymore. 
And just like that, you've got two blue pine cones. I'm going to put a little bit on top again. And then rinse and repeat for how many pine cones you need. I'm going to go do this with all the ones that I need. I think what I have here on the table is exactly what I require for that one garland slash bow slash thing. So I'll get this done. I'll go back and we'll start on the actual garland. Step one. So over here, you've got a piece of wood that I grabbed from my garage. It's just a off cut from a two by four from a couple years ago. And what I did is I marked on here the length of the actual bow that I want to work with. And I screwed in eye hooks onto this board just so over here you can see it. It's just off camera. I wonder if I can turn the camera just slightly. There we go. Right in there, there's an eye hook that designates where this starts and stops. Here in the center is a nine and a half inch drop. And I measured that because that's the way I wanted on my box on the outside. I like to work like this because you get to see how it looks up in the air. You can do it on a table and as such, but I would suggest not to because you can't see how it naturally sags. You have a bit of room once it's up to tighten this drop up and I have, but you would like to get it as close as possible so you're not struggling. So now the next step is, is I'm going to run the green garland. This stuff here. <laughs> around and around and around this to bring up the density of this so i'll do that and i'll be right back we return now over here you can see that i've now oops, i get my arrow the right way you can see that i've run that secondary wreath all the way down on the inside it just adds to the look and the thickness of it you can get away with this step but i like this because it really makes it look rich and strong now right here you'll see the twist tie now this twist tie I don't usually use twist ties in a lot of stuff that I do because I find out in time that they like to rot out especially these cheapy ones but what they're good for is this is just to mark where my hook is so when I go outside to put it up I know to look for this twist tie and that's where it matches the hook on the outside just a cute a quick little tip that will help you place these things when they're done so now the next step is is I'm going to run the lights through this thing again the, and then we're we'll back and I'll be talking about the icicle. So, lights next. Let's do this. So, here we go. The lights are all wrapped. As you can see that what I call this, I don't know if this is a technique that anybody uses, but I use it a lot. It's uh, on the front, you do a long wrap, and then when it goes around the back to go through, I do a very short, vert almost vertical wrap, so I start coming down again. The reason I do this is so you don't waste lights in behind. If you do it nice and smooth all the way around, half your lights are in behind it looks horrible well it doesn't look horrible you just don't see the lights what's the point so you go up you do a quick little wrap around the back and then down the front again quick little wrap down the front now here you can see i did a little bit something a little bit different in the center i actually cut attached it at the bottom here and then wrapped the opposite away so when i go up the other way you end up with the lights all arching towards the center it looks really nice you don't have to do it but it's something that I like to do on these garlands now the next step here is we're going to be mounting the icicles the icicles what you want to do is you want to space them out as best as possible with favor like for at least I'm favoring the front because anything past the point of that red twist tie goes on the side of the window boxes so everything else here I would like to have the icicles spread out pretty nicely here so you see them more than anything. So I'm going to do that next. I'll explain how to go about that after they're up, but that's where my next step is. And to round, what is this? Th one, two, three, step four. Anyways, be back. Return. And as you see, the icicles are now put up. When you do this, what I find is best is if you put if, where that point is here, you pretty much, you go here, you put in your first icicle, then you go way over there, you put in your second icicle, and then what you do is this, the whole thing will droop down exactly where you need it. And what I do is I use a whole bunch of these little guys right here. Hopefully it'll focus on. It's just pretty much haywire that has been bent into a loop. And what I do is once it's done, I just push it up underneath the icicle onto the main bow, and then just pinch with my fingers like so over the top 
And what it does is it holds it in place. I really like using haywire for this stuff because it holds it much better, okay? Next step is I'm gonna be doing the ribbon and I'll be back after that. And hopefully I don't run out. I've been using the same ribbon from last year and I'll be back and I'll show you how it looks from there. So you see, I've got the wraps of the ribbon done. With the ribbon, I don't like to do as much of a quick vertical here because I like the look of the swooping thing. People notice it more than the lights. Now, as you see on the other side, I opposite, loop it around, loop it around, come down, and then what's gonna happen is I just cut a little bit of a ribbon edge out of each one of these because in the center there, we're gonna be putting pine cones and the such. So up we come, all done, and uh, a neat little trick right here. You see how the ribbon has got a little bit of, uh, of the leaf in front of it or the bow in front of it. What I do is I use the, the wire of the bow to pinch the ribbon to keep it where I want it. It's great for placement. You can use it in a lot of different places and it looks natural. It just looks like the, the, the pine bow is getting in the way. Anyways, from there, I'm going to, I don't cut these until they're outside to make sure it's going to match my other two that I've already built which you probably saw already at the beginning of the video. Anyways, so we're gonna go through, I'm gonna put in all the pine cones now that we started at the beginning of the video, and this bow will almost be done. And we arrive at our destination. Uh, this is pretty much the finished garland slash bow slash whatever. And you can see that I stuck these longer pine cones in the bottom because I like how they like hang down, and I put the ponderosa cones at the top because I like, I like the split of the two colors going as I go along. I always do two in the center to give it a little bit and then the, the ponderosa cone in the top. I believe these are spruce cones, but I've never seen spruce cones as big as these ones. So there must be a specific type. Anyways, you can see I just went along. I put them in. This is very much, there is no specific rule for how many pine cones to put on. You put them on until you feel good about it. I got to fix that loop right there. It's too low. But you pretty much have to eyeball it and when it looks good to you you think it has enough pine cones stop you're done you're finished and yeah this is ready to be hung so at the beginning of the video you will see how this looked when it's all finished and hung because that's how i like to do things anyways once again uh sorry for the pointy arrow i'm camera shot and i don't want to get in front of the camera just yet but this is the best i could do so you get mr stick hello mr stick and uh it is, it's it's a good middle ground. So thanks very much for uh, tuning in, everybody. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and all that stuff, and do these projects. I'm literally recording these and putting them out to a very small audience, my very devoted audience, but it's the fact of, I want to see these things built. I've got millions of ideas, and I always have people come up to me say, oh, I wish I could do that. And I'm like, you can do that. And that's the main reason I'm doing these videos, is I want to see more people get into doing this stuff, because it is fun. And you'll see that as the season goes along, this room that is right now very much non-holiday will very much become Christmas this weekend, and this type of stuff is the part that really helps it along. Anyways, uh... I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for tuning in.